Hi guys, this is AJ Stylex and welcome to another tutorial. So don't be learning how to make this beautiful gown you can see on the screen. And well, I copied the red one, the blue is the one I made. So if you want to learn how to make this gown, we'll stay till the end of this tutorial. So these are the materials we'll be needing, the zip. We'll be needing Ankara fabric and I'm working with three years. We'll be needing crepe. We needed this fancy bias and then we'll be needing a stay also. So we're going to be cutting now. So we place our fabric on fold like this. Then we'll rule a straight line, which is going to serve as the shoulder line, just as our starting point. So this is free and method. I'm not drafting pattern. I'm just doing it directly on fabric. So I'm going to mark the neck wideness and I'm marking the neck wideness of four inches and then the neck depth of four inches as well. So I'm just going to curve it, connect it to the curve to form a round neck. Then on that shoulder line that we rule, I'm going to mark half of the shoulder measurement and I'm working with eight and half. Then from the shoulder measurement, um, from that eight and half, I'll come down by one inch to get the shoulder slope. Then from the main shoulder line, the first line we drew, we're going to mark the chest line, the bust line, so the, which is the shoulder to nipple or bust point, and that's... 10.5 i'm working with then on that line i'm going to input the bust measurement divided by four then i'll add two inches for ease allowance so from the um chest line the show the bust line i'm going to go by two inches to get the chest line so i'm just going to mark two inches above the bust line to get the chest line then i'll use a ruler to get a straight line on this line now i'm going to mark the shoulder measurement again there so that i can connect the arm o straight so i'm just going to draw a straight line to get a straight arm o and then we're going to get the midpoint of this line now to form our arm o curve so we'll go in from that midpoint we'll go inside by half inch connect with a straight line from the slope and then draw a curve but the curve now i'm going to stop it at the bust measurement like i said the bust measurement is 10 inches that's 40 divided by 4 is 10 inches then i added 2 inches for ease allowance so from the shoulder i'm going to mark the full length of the dress there's no waist measurement here so the full length of the dress i'm working with is 40 but i'm going to be subtracting 5 inch for the gathers will be making at the down of the dress so i'm going to be working with 34 and half instead of 35 and uh, 30, uh, 35 and half sorry the reason of for the extra half now is to join so i'm just going to mark hip the hip measurement plus four inches the hip measurement i'm working with is 46 so divided by four is about 11.5 then i added four inches extra so the reason is to get that um kind of a shape at the aim so i just connect it now to the chest line so if you can see that there's no waist measurement here so I'm going to cut this out now. But I, I'm just thinking like, okay, I want a very high neck. So I'm going to be changing the neckline. So I'm working with three inches width by three and a half depth. So I'm going to curve it again. So you can choose to just leave it at that four inch since I'm adding zip. So I want the neck a little bit higher. So that's what I'm going to reshape. So since I'm adding zip, this is how it's going to be. So now I'm going to just cut it out. So to confirm the measurement, that is 35.5, then the extra 5 inch I'll be cutting out later for the gathers. So I'm just cutting it out now. So when cutting the shoulder, you leave extra half inch for your shoulder joining. I'm going to be using this now to cut the back. So for the back pattern, you place it on fold like this. And then we'll mark out the zipper allowance because we'll be adding zip to this dress. So for the zipper allowance, I'll be using one and a half as my zipper allowance. You can use one inch. Normally, I work with one inch, but I just decided to work with one and a half this time. So whatever you choose to work with as a zipper allowance is fine as long as you can sew it. So I'm just going to connect the one and a half I marked from the M of the dress. Then I'm going to place my 
folded the folded part of the front pattern now on that line that I drew for zipper allowance. And then I'll just cut every part exactly the same way. So what's just going to be different is going to be the neckline for the back. So for the back neck, I'll be coming down by one and a half, and then I'll be using the same width. So I'll just connect it from the front neck to that one and a half. So I'll cut first through the zipper allowance and then to the back neckline. Then I'll cut the shoulder following the front. So I'm going to slice open the center back where we're going to be having our zipper allowance. Just carefully slice it open like this. Because that's the part you're going to sew as your zip. If you're still watching this tutorial, meaning it's helpful, don't forget to drop your comment. Let me know what you think about it. And please, if you're a new subscriber, welcome. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button to subscribe. So now I'm going to notch the zipper part of the dress. That is the extra one and a half we added for the zipper allowance. Now that I'm done, I'm going to measure from the show that I'm, we're going to be forming a pocket out of this but first of all let's cut the facing the facing for the neck to turn the neckline so to cut the facing just fold your fabric on fold i'm going to be using this small piece of, of fabric left over from the one we cut out now so you can use different any kind of fabric for your facing you see some outfits where you have a um, different kind of fabric for um facing so you can use any other fabric for facing just to turn the neck down to give it a neat finishing so for your facing make sure when you're folding the facing the shoulder should be midpoint of your shoulder so let the facing get to the midpoint of your shoulder ensure that it is like that and then you place it on you place your main fabric on the little fabric you'll be cutting your facing with so just cut the neckline out like this following the main dress and then cut the shoulder slope then you take your fabric your main fabric out then draw the facing curve now from the shoulder so here now i'm going down by four inch you can go as much as even five ten inches depending on how much fabric you have that you're working with so now that i've connected i'm just going to cut it out this is the back actually so i'm going to also cut the center to get the two piece because the back now is in two place because of the zip so i just cut it out so i'm going to do use the same method to cut the front facing so if you don't understand i'm going to cut the front facing again so that you can get it so for the front facing just same method we will bring up bring our front dress then we'll bring the fabric on fold place it your fabric like this on the pieces of material using as facing then you cut the neckline following the neckline of the dress you want to create facing for. Cut the neckline and cut the shoulder. And the shoulder should stop midpoint of the shoulder of the dress you're working with. Then take it out. Then draw a curve. So like I said, the curve can be as much as 10 inches if you have enough fabric. So I'm just going to curve it like this and then cut it out. And ensuring the length of the shoulder for the front facing is the same thing with the back facing, which is the midpoint if you follow it. So we're going to place right side facing each other and then we sew it around. But before then, I want to iron AST. So this is right side facing each other and then you sew by half inch. If you're not fixing AST, you can continue from here. But because I'll be fixing AST, there's this stability AST gives to um you're ready to wear so i'm going to be fixed and uh, ironing a stay on it to give it that stability there's just this feel and fitness it gives you ready to wear all your ankara short gown so i'm going to be ironing a stay and so and that's what i introduced in the beginning of fabric so you can just choose to sew the neck by half inch if you want but now i'm going to be cutting a stay and the a stay is going to just stop on the bust line 
it's not so much just on the bust line so you just place it like you're cutting a new dress and then cut folding that shape so we're going to use the pressing iron now to press the este after cutting it so i will do it both for the back of the dress like i said just to give it some form of stability and also gives it adds beauty there's this feel it gives to the person wearing the dress so we we'll do it for the front and then we'll do it also for the back so now that i'm done cutting the ast i'm going to place my fabric like this on the wrong side of the fabric i'm going to place the ast the ast has the rough part which is the part that has the the gum so or the interfacing so we're going to iron it on it and after ironing it you see what it looks like so now i'm done ironing this is the front and the back you can see it even from the look here you see that the front is strong this part with este is stronger than the part without este and it was ironed at the wrong side please take note now we'll bring the facing so we'll place wrong right side facing each other and then sew it by half inch round the neck so now I'm done sewing the neck round with half inch. I'm going to use my scissors to create notches. This will enable the neckline relax properly. So when I'm done creating notches, I'm going to flip that wrong side I notched into the facing part of the dress. And then I'm going to sew it with a li just little a as as little as 0 0.25 so when you're done sewing to lie down it will lie flat like this so that's the ss so i just let me just say top stitch so just top stitched it so when you're done you do the same thing for the back you and then you iron it to give it that fine finish now i'm going to fold the dress into two like this because i'm going to be creating a side pocket and then from the shoulder we mark out 18 inches which is where our shoulder is going to take place. So now that we've marked it out, we're going to do the same thing for the back of the dress. On the side, please, not the center front or the center back. So now I'm going to be using another piece of fabric to cut pockets. And for the pocket, you can choose any length or width of your choice. So for this pocket, now I'm using a fabric that is similar to the dress we're making. So it won't really show that it's a different type of fabric. So I actually just use the length of 12 inches and then the width of 9 inches. So I'm going to cut it into four places. <laughs> so after cutting it, I'm going to be placing this now on the main dress. So I'll bring the main dress on that notch part now. I'm going to place each piece of the pocket. And I'm placing it the right side facing each other. So the right side of the pocket will face the right side of the fabric and I'm going to sew down. So I'll place it on the two notch parts. That is the part I notched here. I'm going to place the pocket on it, the right side on it, then sew. So make sure the right side is facing the fabric and then sew it half inch. So for the width of the pocket, like I said, I used 9 inches. And then for the length, I used 12 inches. So you can use as much as you want. But if it's too small, you might have challenges. So for the um, neckline, we're going to join the shoulders together separately and then the facing together separately. This just gives a neat finishing on the neckline. So we're going to join shoulder fabric to fabric and lining facing to facing. So I'm going to just pin it where the two, the, the shoulders meet each other, the front and the back shoulder. I'm going to pin and I'm going to sew it half inch from the facing straight to the main shoulder so i'll sew down with half inch and i'll do on the second side now that i'm done sewing with half inch i'm going to flip it down you can see the neck line now it is neatly covered so now that we're done joining the shoulder and the neck we're going to be fixing the zip 
So for um, the zip, you could choose to fix it even before joining the shoulders. There's no um, process in making a dress. You can just choose whatever part you want to start with or stop with. So for the zip, I'm going to be using an invisible zip. And the zip is length 24 inches. But I'm going to be, I won't be sewing all of it. So I'll just mark maybe like 19 inches. So let me check. That's 19 inches. So I'm going to be sewing from the down of the dress to that 19 inches. Then I'll fix the zip. It's an invisible zip, so you could use any type of zip. I just want an invisible zip. So now that I've fixed the zip, it's properly fixed and then turned with the facing at the back. I have a tutorial on how to fix zip perfectly if you don't know how to fix a zip. Now I'm going to make the sleeve. So to make the sleeve, I'll be using this fabric here like this. So it's a puff sleeve, though the sleeve is to ankle length, but um, sorry, a three-quarter sleeve. I'm just marking the wrong side. This is a three-quarter sleeve, but the fabric I have left, the leftover fabric is not much, so it's going to be a short sleeve for me, but I'm going to be showing you how to make a puff sleeve. So the difference with, between this and maybe the sleeve you'll be making is the length so the length of the sleeve so first of all you mark four inches and then you mark your cap height four inches so the first four inches we mark is going to serve as the height of the puff while the second four inches is going to serve as the cap height so from the cap height you mark the arm o depth of the pressing or the arm o roundness divided by two so the arm o depth i use there is nine inches i'm just marking the first four inches mark and then the second four inches mark line we did so and then i drew a straight line from the edge the folded edge to that arm o line then on the the line i drew now from the edge i divided it into two first then divided the other parts into two so that is dividing it into four parts so the last part i'm going to come down by half inch while the upper i'm going to go up by 0 0.75 so i just call from the up to the middle and then to the down so i have a detailed tutorial on how to make different type of sleeve you could also check the channel so then on the top here i'm going to mark four inches and then on the four inches part i'm going to come down by one inch so down from the four inch i'm going to come down by one inch so on the edge i'm going to curve to the one inch and then curve it in to the normal arm o we did on the sleeve so this is how to make a puff sleeve so for the full length i'm just working with what is left on the fabric which is about 17 inches then the down the roundness i used about 10 inches for my the roundness so i'm just going to cut the sleeve like i said you take the measurement of your sleeve where you want it to stop so i'm going to add one inch as the um, sewing allowance for the sleeve so the reason why the down is wide is because we're going to be adding elastic so if it was longer it would be actually better off but now i'm just working with a small fabric that is leftover fabric so the length is not as much as the style we're copying. So after cutting like this, you notch the part where the puff, the puff we curved from up where it met the normal sleeve, you notch that part. So we're going to gather the sleeve from one notch part to the other notch part. You just use gathered stitch. You can use your sewing machine or you can use your needle and thread to gather it round. Now, when you're done gathering it, we're going to be fixing it now on the arm of the dress. So, you clear the midpoint of the sleeve, then you pin it on the shoulder joining, and then fix it around the arm o. So you use your pins to secure it. You fix it around the arm O. And then I'm going to sew it with half inch. Now I'm done sewing it. So I'm going to pin the arm O of the 
that is the joining where the sleeve stops. I'm going to pin it together and then pin all the sides of the sleeve. So now I'm just going to be closing the sides of the dress from the sleeve. I'm going to sew it with half inch. So I'll sew from the side from the sleeve straight down to the pocket. Now you can see now where the two pockets are. The up front and the back pocket where they meet. I'm going to sew it round and then to the end. So that is actually how to sew your pockets. So you just sew it round to the end. So now I'm done sewing it. You can see it is already coming out for fine. And this is it. So this is basically how to make a pocket of to add pocket to a dress. So now when we're done, now I'm going to take the measurement of the hem of the dress. The measurement will determine the length of the gathers we're going to be attaching. So whatever length you get, yeah, I got about 62. So I'm going to multiply it by 2 to get the length of the gathers. Now I don't have a straight fabric that is up to 62. So I'm going to join, that, that is up to 120 six or thereabout so i'm going to join pieces of fabric to get that length why for the um, width of the fa um, dress is the you no know, we said we reduce five inches so which this is five and a half i'm going to be joining so i'm going to join different pieces to get that full length we want and then the width is the five and a half that will make the dress a complete dress of 40 inches length so i'm going to use my needle and thread to gather it and fix it around the um, dress so i'm just going to gather it you can also use your sewing machine but i i prefer working with needle and thread and before you do this ensure you aim the down of the gather so that when you add it you know you just the aim so i already aimed the down of the garden behind camera as well just to make the tutorial a little bit shorter now i'm going to just fix the gathers around the aim of the dress and this is it it is attached already to the end of the dress it's looking beautiful already so this is basically how to make this dress so to add the bow tie we're going to be fixing the bow tie now and i'm going to be showing you but before then the hand we add elastic so you just fold the hand that is the sleeve you fold it i'm using different terms just so that a beginner can relate so you fold the sleeve and then you sew it around you fold with first half inch and then fold with another half inch you sew it around then you bring your elastic use a pin the elastic first of all to know the um, measurement of elastic you'll be needing the round the parts where you are fixed where the sleeve is going to stop you get the roundness of that place and then deduct two inches from it so let's say you are fixing it in a place where the roundness is nine inches you deduct two inches from nine inches seven so your elastic should be about seven inches so it will stretch into nine so that's how you fix your elastic so i'm going to just fix the elastic into the opening i left a little opening while turning the folding the hem of the sleeve so you just fix the elastic round like that with a pin and then bring it out from both ends and use your sewing machine to hold the elastic in place so this is how to fix your elastic in a dress to give that puff effect also or bishop effect so just do back and forth stitches several back and forth stitch to tie it now when you're done you move it inside and then close the remaining opening of the dress with your sewing machine just sew it on top and then you close that part so now they will be making the bow tie this is the bow tie and i'm going to be showing you now how to cut the bow tie now we have two ties there first of all we have two long strips of fabric coming down then we have a bow tie so for the measurements just work with any measurement of your choice but from the picture the both the tie went to the top of the knee just before the gathers so i'm going to be measuring from the shoulder to just before the gathers to know where the length of the tie will be adding and so that's about 32 inches so that's the length we'll be working with so i'll just measure from the top 32 inches 
so now that i'm done but I actually mark 33 so that i'll have half inch to turn both sides so now that i'm done i went all by on the one part of the dress i went all by four inches then i just drew a line to cover it we're just trying to copy the style and then just mark the sides so i'm marking half inch on both sides that i'm going to be using to join it so this is where i'm going to be applying attaching the fancy bias i showed you earlier when i was showing you the material so i'm going to sew round but before that i'm going to sew just one part i'm going to cut it out following this line then i'll sew one part then show you how to fix the fancy bias so the fancy bias, i'm just going to fix it on the middle of one side of this tie i just sew it and the bias you sew on both sides of the bias so you just sew neatly on the two edges of the bias from top to down that's the way to attach this bias so when you're done sewing you cover it you can create multiple designs you can use the bias to create multiple designs if you want but i'm just i just want a straight line coming from top to down but you can create multiple designs if you want then i'm going to close it now sew it down and then sew the side now i'm done sewing i'll just turn it out So I'm, I've done the second one, the length shorter than the first one, it's about 5 inches. So you can make, choose any length of your choice. So I'm just going to use the first longer one piece to cover it. Then we're going to be creating a bow tie on top of this. So let me just use the pin to secure it in place as one piece, like so. Then I'm going to create a bow tie. So to create a bow tie, you just need a square or a rectangle. And I'll be working with eight inches by eight inches on fold by ten inches. So that's what I'll be working with. Or twelve. Okay, let me just make it twelve inches. So I'll be working with twelve inches. Why eight inches on fold? So I'll just cut it out now as a rectangle. So now I'm going to sew the sides round, then stop. A little bit like leave a little like one inch where i'm going to be using to turn it out so i'll turn it out from there but before then you notch all the edges so that it can turn neatly so now i've turned it out this is how to create your bow tie you just pleat the middle then use a piece of fabric to hold it in place so this is basically how to create a bow tie it's very easy but I want to use the um, bias also to, to make the bow tie, also to tie the bow tie. So I'm going to sew it on top and then attach it. So now I've sewn it on top, I'm going to use my sewing machine to join everything together. So this is it. So what you just need to do is attach it to your dress. But for me, I'll be using a press button. I'll just fix press button behind so that I could easily take it off. Maybe when I'm not wearing it or if I want to wash it, do laundry so I can wash with different, um, like wash the white separately from the colored fabric. You could also use your needle and thread to just tack it in. So I'm going to be showing you what it looks like, but I'll just use the pin to hold it and I'll show you what it looks like now. So this is what it looks like and i rocked it to church happy easter thank you guys for watching have a lovely day bye bye from aj style exo